Hello, welcome to this week's Loose Links. Join us for another Tuesday night of fun as we have very hot topics and high debate to talk about this evening. All that and a lot more on this week's show. Michelle, I'm show you. <laughs> how's 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 RuPaul? Is he all right? Is he doing well? Yeah. Thought you'd be able to update me. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, uh, the other panelist, which she normally looks like anyway, has returned from the dead. Is that still a black? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? Do you know if you were on blind date, you wouldn't get chosen with that attitude. <laughs> On. And always with that quick reminder is our, our Jason Lambert on the panel. Welcome, panel. Uh, Zoe, we loved you so much last week. We brought you back. Are you sick of us yet? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. But let's start, as we always do, on um, what you had to say for the polls last week. So the three polls were... Uh, first poll was... Does red tape stall help that is needed in times of crisis? 100% of you said yes. Not one person said no. I was really shocked about that, especially the debate that we had about red tape. Mm. Um, the, second, the second poll was, do you think we have a crisis of our own having 27 million people homeless in England and rising? 100% of you said yes. And the third and final poll was, would you find, find a computer easier to find help with mental health issues than a doctor? 36% of you said no, yes. 64% of you said no. Remember to get in touch. It's your show as well. You are the fifth panel member on here. So make sure you take your hot seat, your cuppa, and join in with our discussions this week. So let's start with topic one. Uh, topic one, victims and survivors of a historic abuse in Northern Ireland have been told that the state believes them and is sorry. 
Ministers from the five main parties have issue, issued issuing a joint apology in Northern Ireland's assembly. In the following, this is the shocking part really, it follows a 2017, so these people have been fighting since 2017 inquiry, which examined the abuse of hundreds of children at church and state run institutions over seven decades. Let's go to you first, Zoe. Are you convinced nowadays, even in places of safety, we should always be aware and always keep our guard up? Yeah, yeah. You've always got to be vigilant and aware, you know. I don't think we'll always or ever have been safe in any um, environment. I mean, for example, you know, within the work environment, we can do checks we can follow the policies and procedures we can do a dbs get references but the dbs ain't going to come back with someone's intentions of what they plan to do if it's you know malicious within the workplace is it you know you can only identify what's flagged up and like kerry touched on as well recently um you know we we even struggle with keeping each other safe in the home you know ex-partners partners um don't come or go with <laughs> references and CVs and future intentions or past um, history, you know, to enable people to have these red flags in front of them. So, yeah, you've always got to be vigilant and aware, I think, no matter what. No matter what everyone tries to do, unfortunately, these things are going to happen, but it's about that fast action when it does happen, to place that appropriate support where needed, I think. Do you agree, Kerry? I can see you nodding your head. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think the thing that flags up for me as well with this specific with this specific um, story that you said is that it took like five years for them to fully investigate something over decades. So, you know, it, it should it shouldn't have to get to the point of an investigation 30 years previous. It takes five years. I understand the length of the investigation because it's over a long period of time, but it should never ever get to that point. The investigation should, it should well, the abuse should be highlighted sooner, some way, and investigations be open and closed and not continue because those poor people have had five years of really not knowing the outcome until the end. So that's trauma. That's an added five year trauma for someone, isn't it? Well, the thing is as well, I know it's, I know it's a very different situation, but I, I just don't think as a world, as a society, or let's even talk about the United Kingdom, we are learning and we are, we are listening. Because take that, take that, I don't know if anybody watched it, but that TV drama, Anne, about, about Huddersfield and the match. And, was it Huddersfield? No. No, uh, who was it? Hillsborough. Hillsborough, Hillsborough, and that big disaster, and how that woman spent her entire life yeah, and she fighting. Died. She passed away before. Yeah, the fighting it was, just it was to a, be heard. By it was a, a massive thing, but it was a massive thing. It was a massive thing in Liverpool, but and a lot come from that. There was a lot of hate and a lot of anger, like there will be exactly in this story. You know, for those affected and the areas that, that it happens in, it does, it affects the community, the city, the town, whatever, wherever it's happened. And yeah, I think Britain is learning very, very slowly. It's not really happening very quickly. Things seem to keep happening or incidents are happening. It always hits the news. It is slowly changing, but too slowly changing. Well, the thing is, though, it, it just... So we let's go... I do, this is the beauty of Loose Links, by the way. We start on one topic and it goes up to, a, like, a thousand more topics. But when we talk about abuse and when we think about abuse, and, and you and me are both, and, and I would say even carrying Jason in a sort of way, um, have our mental health advocates. And we talk about, I don't want to go too far down the, down the mental health road tonight, but what I wanted to talk about is that 
actually, I don't think as a society we are encouraging by authorities and by by coming forward to say, I have been abused. Because as soon as you say, I have been abused, it doesn't mean at all that that case is going to get to court and they, they're going to have their say and hopefully find justification for what they have been through because the authorities can throw it out. So how can we be telling people, go forward, speak out, when actually their story might not be heard? What do you think, Zoe? <laughs> I totally understand. Um, I think it just keeps reinstalling loss of faith, faith within our system at times. But it's not just, you know, it's not the system as a whole. There's just gaps in between. Mm. Something happened recently um, with, close to home, let's put it that way. And the, the it's an ongoing thing, so I can't really talk about it much. But, you know, the, it, the police and the support systems and everybody else in place was absolutely amazing. But uh, the outcome at court that day was not what we all hoped for. So now it's ongoing, you know, so... It can be disappointing and it is slow, but everybody who is working within these public sectors are striving to do their best. You know, it's just that the gaps, the fast action and the person who has the end say, I suppose. But yeah, it is deflating. It, mm. it can be deflating, but not and in all scenarios. And we do, we do have, <clears throat> we do have now, and I, I, I think it's called, is it Zoe's law or somebody's law, where you can go forward? Say again. Claire's law. Claire's Claire. law, where you can go forward to, to, for a person that you're first meeting to find out if this person has been abusive. But Jason, let's put that down to reality a little bit. If you met a person and you, you, like them and you were going on dates would you really step forward to a police station and go under Claire's law can I just check this name out please uh, personally I wouldn't um I, I, I think it's very difficult um different people will have different ideas but I don't think anybody really thinks at the start when they start seeing somebody Oh, I'll just go and check out if they've got a criminal record or if they if they're on Claire's law, do they? Not straight away, um, and it's not it's it's not something that's spoken about very often, is it? So obviously, when we don't talk about it, um, this is why people don't go forward. Do you mm. do you think do you think well, how do we beat that then? Let's, I think, let's, I think it's, a it's a difficult one, Nick, because I think at the end of the day, when you when you think of of someone that's been through this, for them to taken out the equation of what he says about them being afraid if they go to the police, are the police actually going to do anything? Sometimes, if someone's going to go to the police and say, "Listen, this has happened," that is like a light switch moment for someone. It's a bit like a reality check, isn't it? It's like they're actually confirming how much again. I'm going to use the word trauma. How hard would that be for someone to approach the authorities and say, "This has happened to me," and go through all of that and go through statements and go through what happens for it then to come out? There's not enough evidence, or we can't charge charge someone. It is such a the big thing missing, the big link missing here is where's support? Because if if someone isn't going to be criminally charged with an incident, you know, where's the support for the victim? You know, who's had to go through that and bring it all up in the mind again and run through things that have happened. There's, that's the missing link at the end of the day. It's not just a case of someone going to the police station and saying, hey, can you do a check on this person? Excuse me, can I, get, you know, I've been abused. Can you please take a statement off me? There's a lot more to that. It's not like they can just do that and then go home and forget that they've done it. You know, there's all got to be a lot of interlinked services there for these people. And sometimes... That's what's missing, isn't it? That's what Sebastian said. Sometimes they just don't all work together. There's a missing link somewhere. Yeah. 
Yeah, because there is the odd links and they all do their yeah. job to the capacity, but they're not always working in collaborations and you get the miscommunication, which again then raises anxieties for the victim. Yeah. And the thing is, it's all right. I was I was at a chemist uh, this week and it said on the um on the window, um, victims of abuse, we are here on the on the chemist sort of board and it said if 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 you say that you want to speak to somebody privately <laughs> talk to us and we will listen and we will help but the, what what I, and I, I do think that's a help and whatever help is out there we need to we need to get more out there and I've, I've heard about um and being witnessed to calling the police and pressing a number so you don't have to speak and all of that and they are going in the right direction but even within it's like the persecutor's always in front of all that. So I know somebody, not going to name them, obviously, but I know somebody personally who's been through abuse, and they were timed when they were out the house. OK, you're going to pick up this prescription, but you've got 10 minutes to get there and back. So how you haven't got chance to stand at a chemist and go, excuse me, can I have a word? Because you're absolutely, and it's, it's so, it's those TV programmes, isn't it? And I remember I've been a victim of abuse and I've talked about it very many times on this show in 2012. But I remember that you get so wrapped up, so wrapped in this person and you think that you can't breathe without without them being there. And also with my, with my recent ex three years ago, it was a different kind of abuse, but... You're just so like that that it's so difficult to break. And see a way in, in, out. Say, say again, Zoe. To see a way out. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, it's all, it took them to leave me for me to escape it. So I, I, I don't, when people go, oh, you were really brave and you were, I argue that. I go, well, I wasn't really brave because actually... It was them that left. It wasn't. It wasn't me that decided to pack a bag and go. It was them that left. But I just. Do you think that we just have a human desire to be loved, but romantically loved? Do you Do you believe that, Jason? Do you think that everybody has a human desire just to be loved? Um, I think everybody has a human desire to be cared for. Um. Mm. I'm not sure loved is um, everybody has a desire to be loved, but everybody has a desire to be cared for. I mean, look at the mental health problems over lockdown when we couldn't touch anybody, we couldn't hug anybody and we couldn't hug our families and things like that. Everybody wants to feel that need to be cared for. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when a new relationship starts, that cared for, loving, romantic honeymoon is there for maybe two or three weeks and then you start seeing what happens after that but i think everybody has a need to be cared for yeah it's a hard one though isn't it but let's go back to this story a little bit let's go back to this story kerry do you do you think the church should be should be saying sorry do you believe everywhere nowadays even church buildings cathedrals workplaces or do you just believe that it's a massive cover-up and actually it needs to be out and the church needs to make a bit of a stand to make people believe in the church again because obviously we're going to lose people from the church from stories like this or even newcomers that think actually I want to walk through the church door might be afraid of doing it when you see stories like this in the press. I think any employer should apologise for any kind of abuse that's happened in the workplace. At the end of the day, if it's been highlighted or it, it, it's, it's been made aware to the employer and it's not being followed up, then there should always be an apology from the employer. Um, I don't know, I can't really comment. I, I don't know, I don't really know how to, to comment on that one. Um, well, I believe they should. Go on, sorry, was you going to say something? I think with in particular to the case that we're talking about, absolutely they should apologise because sometimes mm -hmm. just getting that apology can validate, you know, that somebody believed them at last. And mm -hmm. you know. 
what do you think, Jason? Think... It'd, be quite, it'd be quite it'd be quite interesting to hear what what you believe. Do you think the church should step forward and and say sorry? Well, yeah, they should really. Um, same as Carrie said, any workplace where it happens. Um, I mean, I've just done a DBS with my church, but it's been three years since I started working there. And they haven't DBS checked you at all before three it's years? Last week. <sighs> oh, that is shocking. That and is shocking. I wasn't working with children, and I wasn't working with um, a children's choir, um, and I was only... You see, I was contracted to, to play one hour a week at church, which was just on a Sunday. So therefore, because I was contracted and not part of a paid member of the... Oh, it's very hard. Because I was only contracted to do that one hour a week, they didn't think they would need to, to DBS me and check me. Um, but the rules changed about three years ago. So now church organists do need to be DBS, but before that they didn't have to be, but now they do have to be. It's shocking though, isn't it? Because if you think about it, I would, I wouldn't think for a second. I'm a, I'm I'm a Christian and I go to church, and I wouldn't think for a second about an abuser being in there. Or, or the thoughts of being in there. But if you really think about it kind of closely and you really, I know it's not a nice thought to think about, but actually a church building is massively vulnerable in that area, aren't they? Massively yeah. vulnerable. Because you are, you are putting your trust in the vicar in the people that are around, that the like the vicar, I know, but I've I've been very privileged in the vicar that I've had, um, and he's helped. But I've told him my whole story. I I I lay I bared my whole soul to him and said, "This is what's happened." Now, give that to the wrong person, mm -hmm. it could be really kind of difficult, couldn't it? It could be something that looks quite serious upon. A lot can happen in an hour. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, do, do you, Zoe, let's go to you for this, because you, you work in different areas and stuff like that. Do you think we're doing enough for victims in the year of 2022? I think more support groups are popping up now. And going back to what you said about the sign being in the pharmacist window, that they are... Um, providing safe spaces now within pharmacies and banks where like you were just saying about that person having 10 minutes where they could literally run in, ask for the safe space, utilize the phone and then ring services and support to come in uh, to enable them to get that help and get away. Um, but again, it's a slow process like anything and it all comes down to funding and, you know, but, and policy and procedure and all the rest of it but again we all need to be safe um more can always be done do you know what do you know who i think I, I, there are many other tv shows available but i am going to use this one because i think they've I've, i found it at times difficult to watch i found it at times comforting to watch I've, I've been really mixed about it but i think who have played it absolutely fantastic and shown us on like on entertainment that, that sounds awful but entertainment tv is eastenders with the gray story i think the gray story about how he abused he abused his wife and he killed her and then he found somebody else and and people have said to me in the street oh this um, even my mum sorry i'm calling you out mum but even my mum would go oh this story's going on far too long i'm really bored of it now it, they just need to catch him and i go well that's reality yeah. mum it takes time for somebody to claw you in it takes time for that trust it takes that and then they start turning and then they start changing so eastenders must have took this story well over a year, but you could see the build up. You could see this happy family, <clears> around, you could see this romantic love, and then you could see fear. And there was children involved as well. And I just thought they did it. Is anybody an EastEnders fan on this panel? You're all going to go now. 
<laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> but they did it. If you can look it up, they did it absolutely amazingly. They did it incredibly. But tell us what you think out there. Remember, you are the fit panel member. Do you believe that we are doing enough for victims in the year of 2022? Should the church formally apologise and step forward even though it might not be the people that's apologising, but we all stand together. Do you think the church should be apologising to the victims after seven decades of abuse? Tell us what you think. Join the panel. We have many ways you can get in contact with us. We've got the Facebook page and group. We've got Instagram. We've got TikTok starting with uh, Zoe in the corner. So we will be on TikTok soon. We've got uh, Instagram. Kerry runs our Instagram. Uh, we've got www.lifestrands.co.uk or you've got loose links at gmail.com. Make sure you get in contact with us and have your say. Right, it's fisty cuffs at the ready because this debate got us very heated last night. So let's see how we get on. Jason, I'm ready for you. Get your boxing gloves on. <laughs> yeah, your boxing gloves on. So... As TV presenter comes back, Piers Morgan makes a stand on a new show stating how he was the victim to a well-known TV show, as he states was at its peak. Now saying he's not in the wrong for what he, he said, and do we actually stand by the presenter. Now we did a little video on TikTok to say he was coming back. I have got this video to show you ladies and gents so I'm just going to show you what he said and then we'll have a little conversation about it. So this is Piers. A year ago today I was forced to leave a job that I loved at the peak of its success for having the audacity to express an honestly held opinion. Well, this shouldn't happen in any democracy, supposedly built on the principles of free speech and freedom of expression. So I'm delighted to now be returning to live television with a new primetime show whose main purpose will be to cancel the cancel culture, which has infected societies around the world. I want it to be a platform for lively, vigorous debate, for news making interviews, and that increasingly taboo three letter word, fun. I also want it to annoy all the right. I'm Piers Morgan, uncensored. I can't stand him. I just, I cannot stand him. Um, but let's let's see, let's see where where we go in this direction. Kerry, do you believe we have lost? We have lost freedom of speech. No, I say what I want, especially to you. I don't care. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the show. Good night. God bless. See you soon. <laughs> um, I think freedom of speech, you have to be careful. He's a celebrity. He's a presenter. It's different from me saying something to you, isn't it? You know, or saying something to someone else. It, it, it's, it's nothing. When you're a well-known person on the TV, I think you do. I need think you need to be careful with your choice of words. And... Well, it was all over. We'll go back to uh, March 2021. And it was all over the Harry and Meghan scandal. Now, what I want to talk about tonight a little bit is actually... Scandal. Oh, shut, your face, scandal. shut your face. Don't even start yet. But... It was all over the Harry and Meghan and how how he criticised Meghan for, for, it was a load of lies and stuff like that. So let's go back to that story a little bit. He was, in my eyes, completely abusive on the telly, completely knocked somebody down off their feet. And uh, do you know what? <laughs> It came across because I, I asked the panel to watch to watch the Pierce Morgan interview all over again, and how he came across to me was a bully. Right. What I, what I want to say is, everybody doesn't like anybody. Uh, everybody. Nobody. Nobody in this world is friends with anybody. 
there I went back on programmes on him on Good Morning and he constantly, constantly slagged off Megan and brought her down. Now, in my eyes, say what you need to say, move on. Don't keep going on about it. Don't, because you've got this platform to stand on, don't keep going on about it. And then it is the schoolboy thing of bloody walking off stage when somebody vowed to have a different opinion than he did. I don't agree with it at all. What do I think, you think, it, I think? I think as co-presenter, it was female shot him down. And I think the comments that he made... He's not a woman. He wasn't walking in Megan's shoes. He doesn't know the ins and outs of everything. And that's why I'm saying he should have been really careful with the choice of words and on what he was saying, because he is a very, he comes af af across as a very cocky, um, well, not well presented. What's the word I'm thinking of? Very cocky and Likes people likes to put people out of the comfort zone by certain comments, which he, he could handle. If someone threw that at him, he could handle it because of, of the way he is. But I did read, even though all this stuff that he said, he was clear by Ofcom in not breaching rules. So it, I think I've got to look at it one, in one way. He shouldn't have said what he said because he wasn't in his shoes. He's a man, he's a middle-aged man. He's not a young woman with, with moving from America over into Britain. He, he said things wrong that way. But at the same time, it, it's people's perception of what he said. I, 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 didn't, I didn't watch it originally when it was on. I have looked back at what he said and stuff like that. I'm I'm not interested to a point because I don't watch him, but um, you're really obviously from your heart there, isn't it? You don't like him. He's marmite, as you said. You like him or you hate him. I, I'm not really bothered with him to be honest. But a lot of the things that he said touched a lot of people. What do you think, Jason? I like him. I um, do. I I think the problem is that we've gone into a bit of a woke culture. Oh, I hate that word. Where, Don't use that word. Well, you can <laughs> not say anything now without upsetting a person. A, yeah. But I'm you can. Person. You I'm can say stuff. You can't, though. I mean, this is what comedians are saying. They're saying we can't make a joke anymore because if we make a joke, somebody complains. We've got this, we've got this, this is what he's saying. I want to be able to actually have a program that uses that three letter word, fun. But it's, uh, there's fun and there's bullying. Yeah, there's a huge I, difference. They didn't bully that day. Oh, I think he did. Go oh, on, know. so we throw in before we carry on. What, you, what have you got to say? I'm not sure I watched the same interview because um, <laughs> in hindsight, and I know you, you, you guys ain't going to agree, and I am a woman, um, but I do like Piers, and I think we've got to remember Piers is paid to be a journalist. He's paid mm. to challenge people, and mm. he's made a successful career from it. So there are many people that tune in to watch Piers, so not everybody doesn't like Piers, and there was over 40,000 complaints to Ofcom, and mm. all I could See by lightly exploring that last night was that peers merely called them out on their hypocrisy. So they were hypocrites within the media asking for privacy when it suited, but then was going around on an open air bus when they wanted the press and they wanted mm. the, you know, the limelight. So again, it's a love hate relationship with the media. But if you say one thing and then you conflict in other areas, all peers did was highlight that in my eyes and actually. Piers stormed off because his colleague called him diabolical, but that was accepted, you know, mm -hmm. and Piers got a lot of backlash behind closed doors. And mm -hmm. I did not identify any racism, which he also got a lot of, lot of <clears throat> abuse. No, I didn't see, I didn't notice any racism either. But the problem but please is educate that, me if I'm wrong. But, but the problem is, is that I, I believe from, from my experience of somebody saying there's no freedom of speech anymore, from my from my experience and of hearing people say that and is is to me it's people going you're not listening to my opinion my opinion's right and listen and that's when I feel that 
there's no freedom of speech anymore comes out a lot more when somebody isn't winning an argument. And what really, really annoyed me is I would have respected Piers a lot more if he had listened to other people around him. But the whole yeah, interview... Don't, go yeah, on, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, Nick. I mean, Piers challenges people and he does, you know, raise and challenge in all areas that does pee people off at times. However, he does need to reflect and learn to handle the backlash of that. If he's mm. going to give it, he's got to be able to take mm. it as well. I think that's it, isn't it? Like you just said, Ben, you know, if, if he was in front of someone and he was giving it all this and someone was giving it back, like the other presenter just said one word to him and he walked off in a huff, that's because he's very self-opinionated, isn't he? He doesn't want to listen to anybody else. Someone telling him he's wrong, I'm not going to put up with that. And off he goes. It was Alex if, Hey. It was Alex Berrisman. It was, wasn't it? It was, it was the was presenter. A, well, a racist, at least what he said to Piers. And that's what made Piers walk off. Yeah. But he, he did he call across in a Go on, say, say, say again, Zoe. Sorry, I don't want to be a Piers. <laughs> Let's let's remember I'll be peers all day long. <laughs> but the let's thing remember, is, he on. didn't walk off. You know, he, he didn't get. I mean, he walked off. He didn't get sacked. He yeah. is coming back. You know, but he's not coming back to Good Morning Britain. Well, he'll be back. He's not he coming back to that program. And the he thing is, still got. He's still got. He's still got his um, that peers program. The interview one. I see that's no, still he Kate's got has, it, you know, Kate uh, Garraway. Kate Garraway's now got it. I read something that he's still got something going on. Mm. No, it's Kate Garraway who's took over that programme now. She is mm. his, his interview with Kate Garraway now. It's not Piers anymore. But there was many, many... This is where the, we're going back to the story. So Luce thinks is going back in time. We're going back to the story of his argument on that show. Now, as I've said to you before, I believe when people use the expression freedom of speech, it's when they're not being listened to and not being heard. And what I wanted to say was that on that show, Susanna, there was people trying to go but peers, but listen, and it was like, no, no, he even told, he even told somebody in the interview, wait, wait, I'm talking. And I just think, hold on a minute, hold on, this isn't a healthy debate anymore. This isn't, this isn't conversation. This isn't, this is, listen to me, I'm right and agree. And that's what I really, really struggled with. Now, now, when we go back to the story, this is where me and Jason disagreed a little bit last night because we went back to the story. I am, and I'm sorry, I will stand by it, I am Team Megan. And I thought, actually, when she talked about, because I did some research, because I wanted, I said it last night without any facts. So I wanted to do some research into it. So I'm going to talk about how I felt Megan was pushed out of the UK. Not, not, not her decision to jump on a plane and fly over to America and start this new life. But actually, the stuff that she went through, I wouldn't have mentally coped with it. I wouldn't have survived. I just wouldn't have done it. And what I want to say is going down the mental health route, and Jason, you might come back at me, but going down the mental health route, it has been written up and reported that Megan did go to the royals and say i am struggling mentally i need your help and what the what she got from the royal family was you are not paid staff so we will not help you so when you have someone when you have somebody that you've given your whole life to and i, I agree with you jason about the part of i don't believe that she did didn't know anything about the royal family before she arrived i i really believe that but actually imagine put yourself there for a split second imagine telling somebody bearing your soul to somebody and going i'm struggling and then being told no you're not paid off you go so she can go private then she didn't have the money to go private. Yeah, but, but the thing is, how it came across, how it came across is she wasn't allowed to go anywhere. No. So how how can she get out? How can she get out of the palace to receive private? She could have gone anywhere. People can come in. People can come into the palace to do it. Why would she have to go out? Well, why, 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 do, why do 
why do we have to be a royal and our Meghan lives Meghan. have to die? Why? Are we, could, could any of you three do it? Could any of you three, if Harry fell in love with you, go into the royal house and give up your whole entire that is, life? That is, that is the whole point of joining the royal family. She was an American actress who looked and met Harry who knew about the royal family. I'm sorry, who bloody doesn't? An American actress knows about the royal family. She mm. knew what she was going. She was mm. leaving a country. She was coming over to the bloody UK to live with Prince Harry, with the royal family. Fair enough, totally get it. She when, probably did bloody struggle. She probably did struggle. I'm not getting away from that she fact. She said she didn't know Harry, but um, her sister said, when Princess Diana was there, she had pictures all over a wall. Yeah, she knew, she knew, she knew about the family. She knew what she would have had to give up. She was a very independent young the woman. woman. She went to the institute, didn't she? And they, yeah. they declined her to gain help, whether private or not, by stating that it wouldn't be good for them. It wouldn't look good for them. And that's disgusting because we're out here, everybody today is fighting to reduce stigma and campaigning to raise awareness. That's the point, and it took. But they didn't need to be public. It, that information didn't need to be public. They could have done something. They could have got. So I'm saying somebody could have gone in. Didn't need to be public There's knowledge. No that way she, it wouldn't be public. Know, there, is, there is no way on God's earth that woman was watched twenty four bloody seven. You are not telling me that she could sneak. So you, know, so you think so you think people know every single person that comes in and out of Buckingham Palace or wherever they live to can't remember. Yeah, and my, and my other argument is Megan fell in love with a human. Megan fell in love with Harry. Megan didn't fall in love with the royals. Megan fell in love with Harry. Now, if he you was know, a royal, all got, he was a royal. Yeah, but the thing is, we've all got. I think Megan could have absolutely turned around the UK. But we did not give her that chance at all. It well, was really, like, it almost felt like, you don't fit, off you go. Said, she said she didn't want the publicity. She didn't want it, <laughs> only when it was narrative, to make it <laughs> good. Apart from that, she didn't want the publicity. It's like her dad um, fall, falling out with her dad. And her dad says she's never forgiven her dad for spending a million pounds when they were children and then uh, making her poor. She's never forgiven him for doing but we, the way. thing is, we are just viewers from the inside, aren't we? We talked about abuse earlier. And what, I, what I'd like to say is we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. We, and I, I think we are, we are judging. And, and I'm not saying the, royal, the, the royals are absolutely disgusting and, merit, and, and, and bloody Megan's this, this angel from above. But actually, we don't know that story. We don't know what happened. And and I just I just feel like as a society that 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 questionable thing about the baby's skin just makes my skin crawl. I just think, mm -hmm. how dare if, you? If they're prepared to do an interview where they bear their souls, why didn't they say who had said it? Because because the royal family would have crashed down if they, they didn't they want didn't, to be they, they didn't want to be part of the royal family. So what was it have done? They've already shooed out both of them. Even Harry has been well, now. They spent an hour trashing the royal family, so they might as well just carried on. Yeah, but the thing is, if they had named somebody, well, they should have right. So I think they did the right oh, thing by yeah. not naming. If they're bearing yeah. their soul to Oprah and want to be so open about it, then do the whole thing. Don't hold back with information. Mm. I think but I, 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 I truly believe... Go, go on, Zoe, sorry, go on. I think on balance as well, I think um, Megan was, you know, saving her marriage as well to an extent because he didn't want to expose. He said he would never talk about certain areas. So they're working in partnership to a degree there as well that you've got to take into consideration mm. the impact is his family. He was protecting it, wasn't he? That's why he's done what he's done, I think, anyway, and gone back over there because he didn't want anything to happen. He lost I his mum. I don't mom. blame him. I don't blame him. I, I think I would have done the same thing because actually the life that they've had now, they can just concentrate on love. They yeah, can they concentrate don't. loving each other. They don't know, do they? They still pop out when they need some money to do an interview. And then, well, wouldn't you? 
wouldn't they? Yeah, well, yeah, wouldn't you, Jason? Honestly, to survive, wouldn't you? If you had that status and you were over it, over in America, oh, because he's a millionaire uh, over a right. He's got millions that he got from Diana when she died. Oh, know. now we don't even go down down the Diana discussion because the thing is, I believe, I believe, I strongly believe that Harry has been through two tragedies, and from the first tragedy, we've learned nothing. We've learned absolutely nothing. We're talking about mental health again, all over again that we talked about when when Diana died, and again. What did the royal family do? We watched that film about the Queen. Now, I love the Queen. I absolutely adore the Queen. I think she's high up there. And uh, she has total respect for me. But when you watch that film about Diana and how long it took the Queen to come out to show her respects to Diana dying, she put it off and she put it off and she put it off. And she didn't, and, and that little boy, that little boy is finally now a man and coming out and saying, actually, I'm struggling. I'm standing up for mental health. I'm doing this. And you think that that man has worked in that society all of his life. And he comes forward to say, I need help. His wife comes forward to say, I need help. And what were they given? They were pushed away. Both of them pushed away. But they could have gone private and they could have brought Yeah, some but, but if it, 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 it made, it's a media it wonderful yeah. thing. Media's a wonderful thing because media will portray certain parts of a story and not the full story. We're never going to know the full story. You know, you're going to take on board what you read and make your own opinion of that. At the end of the day, I'm a bit open-minded. This is being said, that's being said. We're never going to know the full truth. They've gone over to America for whatever reason. It won't just be one reason on what happened with Megan. There'll be a lot of other stuff. There'll also be a lot of positive things as well. But the media is amazing. I plant a little seeds in their stories for people to get like this, exactly like this. I can't sit there and slag the royal family off. I can't sit, sit there and slag anybody off because I haven't been in their shoes and I haven't been in their situation. We're only picking up on what's written or what we read, isn't it? What we read. The perspective, isn't it? Everybody's of course perspective. It is. Of course it is. And they're both adults. They've done what they've done to protect themselves because that's what they want. Let them get on with it. The consequences are, is Harry even part of HRH now, is he? No. He's not, is he? So, you know, he's made that decision. He's lost that. He's done it for a reason. He's done it out of love. That's what you've just said. Let them get on with it. And it's, like the monarchy, it's like the monarchy. I get, I completely get. Because I try and put, you try and put yourself in, in royal shoes all the time, don't you? And I've, as I said, I'm not slagging the Queen off. I'm not slagging off the royal family. I have huge respect for them. But when I think about it, when I think, actually, if I was born into that family and my whole life was ordered, I knew exactly what I was going to be doing when I was 25. I knew exactly when I was what I was going to be doing, where I was going to be living, never really having my own independence, always being in that house. Can you free honestly say you would be happy to do that. Or would yeah, you Yeah, because that's the, it's that's the way you brought up. It's the institutionalised. That's the way you brought up. And Harry's like, always fought against it, though, if you think been, about it. Yeah, though. but he has been different, and probably he's gone through trauma with losing his mum. The amount of times he was told, said this, didn't I? He was on front-page news when he was naked in a hotel room in Las Vegas or somewhere. He was going through a bloody rough time. But mm. everybody's so different. Everybody's so different. People used to say about Harry and William and, and Harry wasn't looked as favourably as William and Prince Charles wasn't Harry's dad. Can you imagine what he went through growing up as a kid with losing his mum? Media, which you bloody hate sometimes, saying that, saying that Prince Charles isn't his dad and then he's dealing with this with his wife. If you're brought up in that environment, it is you brought up, that's all you know. Mm. But Harry experienced other things didn't he not just but i think I, I think i think i relate more to harry because i think that would have been me i would have been the rebel one i would have been no i don't want my life like this i don't want my life planned i don't want to know what i'm doing i want to be independent you're telling me that and i know it's the way they were brought up and stuff like that if you told me that i had to live with my mom till the day she died 
There is no way on God's earth would I have survived that. They don't, they don't, they don't live with the parents, you divvy. Yeah, but the the the, to, be, to be set in their life, every child has a dream, don't they? Every child has a dream about being a teacher or about being a policeman or about doing this, that and the other. So, or, did, so, did, so did Meghan Markle have a dream about being a princess and marrying a prince? Yeah, but the thing the is, UK, all so. of that was... All of that was taken away from the boys. And I know what you're saying. It's the way that they were brought up. It was there. But it's like childhood dreams are ripped away as soon well, as they're born. Harry went to the army and went to Iraq and fought in Iraq. And he was in the army. So he didn't have his dream ripped away, did he? he yeah, wanted... but, 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 but everybody favours William because he's followed in the way of everybody else has followed. But actually, I think I think Harry's made, made a new kind of royal in the year of 2022 because uh, the thing is we have lived like this it's not a royal but we have lived like this jason for years and years and years but harry isn't a royal y yeah but in the same respect when are we going to make the royal family modern well when we're talking about modern and we're talking about moving forward and talking about mental health and all of that but we'll do the royal family like we did a hundred years ago and we won't change it. Actually, we'll... actually, I disagree. Because if we were doing the royal family like we were doing 100 years ago, Nicholas, Prince Andrew would still be in the royal family as well, wouldn't he? But he's not. So actually, isn't he? He's no longer part of HRH, is he either, Jason? No. There you go. There you go. So how modern do you want this? How modern do you want it? Do you want the Queen on Lorraine Kelly of a morning? <laughs> <laughs> or on loose women. Maybe you should invite her on here and make it all modern and jazz it up a bit and get them on some talk shows because that ain't going to happen, is it? They are modern. They could have brushed all that under the carpet with Andrew and they didn't. They, they shooed him off, unfortunately. And it is what it is. That's his own bloody fault anyway, that yeah. is. We ever have a royalist on the show. I am giving you direction of being a presenter for that show. <laughs> Hello, yeah? Make sure I'm added on that one. I want to name. Yeah, wouldn't mind having a bit of banter with the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move forward. Uh, I've lost it now. Um, Zoe, do you think people? Do you agree with me? Do you think people use the saying um, "freedom of speech" to make people listen to what they are saying? No, I don't agree. No. <laughs> oh, go on then. <laughs> Bloody hell, I've got a panel of Grinches today. Come on then, <laughs> tell me. Tell me why you disagree. I don't agree. I don't agree. I think there's a very fine line today of how you word things and what you say without upsetting someone somewhere. Mm. Mm. I really do. I You're think all everything... just tears for lovers, aren't you? That's, that's the problem. No. You're all just tears You can lovers. live politically correct day in day out 24 7 i mean for example being sat on here i have to watch what i say to a degree as i never get bloody employed again <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? but i won't be saying the exact uh grammar behind closed doors i have to say <laughs> you know what i mean but nah yeah no i don't think the idea behind that at all no but let's take Pierce then, for example, Kerry. Do, do you think, <clears throat> do you believe when views are shared like this that can offend a state of living or a state, let's take LGBT, for example, let's take that, for example, and someone sits it out on national television and says it's wrong, it shouldn't be, this is my opinion, this is, there's no freedom of speech, it's wrong. Do you think there should be a rule within television that if you offend a certain way of living or who you really are, that they should be taken off TV for good? No. Is it journalist? I think that's such a thing as a debate. We could go on any debate TV show and someone say, I totally disagree with that. I'm against all the LGBT stuff. And then you'd have people who support that to say, well, actually, now this is how we look at it. This is the debate side of things, isn't it? You can't just put all the negativity on someone that doesn't agree with something because you might be passionate about it or you agree with it. The debate yeah. is you get someone to, someone against and you speak about it. You doesn't mean you're going to change the this person who doesn't agree with it to agree with it, but you have an open debate there to show actually this can be spoken about in this way. 
if you took every person off the TV who wanted to say something or have their own opinion, they'd be big all on TV, wouldn't they? Sorry, oh, yeah. they'd be bugger all. Sorry, they'd be nothing on TV, <laughs> wouldn't they? <laughs> TV. Oh, you've got me on one tonight. <laughs> Just don't ask me any more questions. Oh, you are one. But do you, so we, we've, we've, I don't know if you saw it, but with, with Pierce storming off the stage, do you think that was almost like a toddler tantrum? I know there's, I know there's journalists and stuff like that, but there are plenty of journalists that will give an opinion and state and not offend in the same sort of way. But I mean, you were saying about uh, Pierce saying, stop, listen to me. But I've seen an interview where there was a lady and she would not let him talk. She would not let him breathe, you know, and he really was viciously attacked on stage. Did you see that too, Jason? It was horrific, but this wasn't highlighted. And then, you know, if your colleagues are then... Sorry, Jason. Same morning of that interview, they had four people talk, and there was a four panelists talking, and he was talking, and the lady just shot him down every time he opened. Yeah. Him. But he did the same thing. No. <laughs> if, if you give it, take it. Do you know what I mean? If, if you can't, but this, I think. But I think that was Piers's point. You know, he, he was not being racist, but he felt like he was being attacked for that. And then he was called out like diabolical. And then he was called out left, right, and centre on telly. But that was all, you know, that was all okay. Um, so he was actually, I, I agreed. In, all I all I could see anyway was him calling them out and being hypocrites in areas of which actually they proved they were. So mm. what, what an interesting debate that was. But join us, see if you guys agree. Are you Get on your soapbox like Kerry did. Let us know what you think <laughs> about the debate of Fierce and the debate. Do you think that, he, that the Meghan and Harry story was given out wrong? Are you favourable to Meghan or favourable to the Royalists? And do you think freedom of speech has completely disappeared? Or do you agree with me that freedom of speech is only used when someone's opinion isn't getting heard. Have your say. So we finish on our last topic. Are you ready, Silla? I'm not. Don't ask me anything on this. I've had enough now. I'm all. I'm, all, I'm out. I'm out of gas. Oh, no, don't you're going to storm off like Morgan. Are you just going to? Yeah, walk? I am actually. <laughs> just walk off. Um, parents have been left frantically trying to find an alternative childcare after the Little Treasures Nursery in Lincolnshire closed unexpectedly. Families were reported only given short notice about the closure at 6pm on Wednesday, March the 2nd. Lincolnshire County Council was informed late afternoon on March the 2nd that the nursery would close overnight and would not reopen for business on the 3rd of March. March. Zoe, I've changed questions around a little bit. Zoe, talking about childcare, do you believe you have to choose between children or career? I don't think you do today. Not like years ago, it was kind of categorised and expected to a degree. I've been a mum when I was young and I've been a mum again later on in life. Um, I don't think people expect it of you now I think women are more independent I think um we've got more of a um place in the workplace you know um more career driven I don't think we're judged whether we do or we don't now do you, do you think it happened years ago um Kerry did you was you ever put on the spot between career and children did you have to ever make that oh look Kerry's brought a partner on just to say hello to us <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> Just to uh, do you think years ago it was? Do you think it, years ago it was a choice between career or kids? A long time before my time. I ain't that old. Why do you come to me with that question, <laughs> daughters? Right, way before my time, Nicholas. Yeah, I think it was stereotypical. This is where this same um, comes with us, isn't it? Where does the woman belong in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. I don't think so. Um, 
Years ago it was, it was the man went out to work, the woman left. My, my nan had done it, my nan had given up her career um, to stay at home with the kids and my granddad went to work. Uh, the same with my other grandparents, it was the same kind of thing again. Um, nowadays, now, even, 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 even when I, while I've had kids, mine's always been, I want to work. I, for me, I just, I, I wasn't a stay at home mum. My kids still got, before anyone says, my kids still got all the love and all the support and they didn't miss out on anything from what mum should give. Well, I don't know, Carrie, I've witnessed it. I'm not sure I completely agree. <laughs> my kids can give you better lift than what I can. <laughs> yeah, they can! They can! <laughs> Literally, Carrie can start and she's on, she's on the soapbox and she starts and then, and then the daughter will say something because she's like... Carry on for me. I can shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sure. Um, Zoe, do you think there's enough support out there for single parents these days? We're getting there, um, but there's still a long way to go. Same with everything. Um, for example, a friend of mine recently went back into employment um, and she'd come up against childcare costs. Um, and so she worked with the work coach to get back into work, which she successfully did and secured two jobs, actually. Um, and then uh, it turned out that she had to pay £600 in childcare fees, wow. um, which was <laughs> on balance with and on par with her wages um, outright before anybody would help because now Universal Credit say that they'll pay 85% or whatever it is towards mm. her. But actually that couldn't be paid back until it was paid. But then by the time it was paid, it was a month in arrears. So she challenged this and said, are you telling me that any single parent that goes out to work basically has to have £600 deposit for childcare fees before they can even get back into the workplace to have a better quality of life mm. for, you know, being a single parent? And she said, and the work coach said, yeah, unfortunately so. She said, I didn't agree. She said she didn't agree with it, but it was above her powers. But yeah, so that's the state of that at the minute unfortunately mm. do you think do you do, do you still think we're, we're looked upon uh, a little bit more when you're a single parent do you think do you think that we're still in a judgmental society when it when it comes to being a single parent and being on your own is that who's that for yeah, you know i can go to you first so what if you ever felt judged as a single oh, parent God. Yeah, because obviously I was young. I was a young mum. So, yeah, I got absolutely hammered for that, left, right and centre throughout life. Now, uh, maybe I've just come resilient to it and just sort of... So I don't Mm -hmm. see anybody getting judged, actually, for being a single parent. I think they um, struggle still being a single parent and maybe it should be highlighted more, but then it's... It's one of them in it because that's never going to get highlighted because they're promoting it. So, what do you think, Jason, Kerry? Do, do, do you still think? <clears throat> Help me out. Do you do you still think stay at home, stay at home dads and mums going to work are still very judged in the year of twenty two? Um, not by me. Um, if dads wish to stay home and mum wants to go out to work, I don't see that's an issue. Um, I, I mean, possibly some people might find it odd and go, oh, a stay-at-home dad. But I've got a friend who's a stay-at-home dad. Um, they stay at home and his partner, and they're, they're a gay couple, and his partner goes out to work. But he stays at home, and, and he, he stayed at home all the way up to this kid being 15, I think, before he started going back to work again. I... I think everybody's judged over something, aren't they? Mm. Everybody... I think I agree with that. I think in society, there's a society step all the time and none of us actually realise we're in it. So when, when we're a kid, <clears throat> we dream about this big life, don't we? We dream about beyond, beyond the doors and what we want to be when we're older and stuff like that. And then we start school. And I remember, I remember saying to my sister, because I've got, I've got a very young nephew, he's two in June. But I've said to my sister, don't, don't run him off to playgroup as soon as you possibly can. Don't get him in a nursery. Don't, just enjoy the time. And she was like, why? And I said, well, that's him then set up for life. 
do you know what I mean? Nursery, school, education, it all starts, it never stops. So actually let's slow it down a little bit. Let's just let children be children for a while before we set them into, into the reality of life. And when, when we talk about life, we're always aiming for a stepping stone, aren't we? So when, when we're that young person, we want to move out of the family house. Then we want to find that perfect relationship. Then we want to get married. Then we want to find that big, big house that we can live in. Then we want to find, we're thinking about the 2.4 children that we want. Then we want two cars on the drive. Then we want the perfect job, the amazing holidays, the grandkids, all of that. And it builds up to retirement. And the reason that retired people fall down so quick is there's nothing after that. There's nothing to aim for after that. It's, no, it's enjoyment. It's, it's, you've just worked your backside off looking after the kids for 20 odd years of the bloody lives. In my retirement, I'm out of there. <laughs> I'm saving up to be going anywhere I want to go. I think at the end of the day, you know, I know you said then about your nephew and keeping them at home. That's different for every parent because putting your child into nursery and toddler group and then preschool and then you, you know reception and that it, it does have our friends where the child's been very um unable to socialize because they have been at home all the time they haven't done the same thing my children are very social and they've been able to to mix and gel and you know some sometimes it works for the best sometimes it it, it doesn't give children they need to experience some kind of group growing up so they can mix with children and know how to interact with children the same age not just mum and dad or older siblings i feel like i'm just about to say it's the end of the show but have you ever watched there's many other tv programs available but have you ever watched jerry springer in his final thought i feel like we, we should say that again. I've watched Jenny Springer where they throw the chair at someone. I'll do that. <laughs> Jenny Springer and his final thought. Kerry's final thought for the evening. Uh, Goodbye and God bless. Yeah, not a chance. <laughs> can, you, can you thank my panel for this evening? It's been a magical show. Ladies and gents, thank you for keeping me entertained. It was, it was quite a debatable show. We can't keep him too long because he'll be flying across the world. But can you thank... Michael Kane, who was on our on our <laughs> TV show this evening, can you please give our love to RuPaul and Michelle? Won't you make sure that is 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 kind regards from us? And also, it's been a bit of a surprise, surprise this evening with our Gary Gillespie and Silla Black, mm -hmm. but it's been incredible. And me. Alan Carr. But no. make sure, <laughs> make sure you tune in next week because we'll have new panelists, new debate, and a lot more chat. Thank you for coming with us on a journey on your Tuesday night. Thank you so much. Good night, God bless, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Bye.